So we're hearing that Zach Kilman is non-committal committal on Dylan Brooks's future with the Grizzlies. I'm at work right now, but I want to hear your thoughts. And also, is it Kilman or Kyleman? I think it's Kilman, right? I had a friend who had the same name. But the Memphis Grizzlies general manager and president of basketball operations, Zach Kilman, was non-committal committal. Just basically, it wasn't committing to Dylan Brooks's future with the Memphis Grizzlies. As you guys know, Brooks is a restricted free agent, this unrestricted free free agent this summer. And he's kind of been scapegoat. And, you know, some people didn't like the trash talking, all the attention he brought. But Brooks is is someone that he's going to have an interesting offseason. And Dylan Brooks, yeah, he didn't have a good playoffs. But he's somebody who now, it's crazy to think that he came into the NBA in 2017. This is a guy who's been on the Grizzlies for six years. And the reason that this is technically going to be his third contract to get is because he was a second round pick. And then he got an extension after his third season, which was that three year deal, which was like, what, $48 million or something like that, or 45. And he was a guy when he got that, he had jumped, you know, he'd always been a guy who was like flirting with, you know, like 40, like it seemed like he could become this guy who was like a 44, 45% from the field and like 35 but the last two seasons, I mean, last year he was averaging 18 a night, which was cool, but he, and, and he was shooting 43% from the field, which made up for the fact that he was shooting 31% from three. But really, for the first four years of his career, he was this guy who was flirting 35 36% from three. But the last two years, I mean, this year he went from being an 18 points per game score, all right? And really, he had a three-year period where he was 16, 17, 18 a night, and then he drops the 14 isn't even scoring 40% from the field, okay? He's he's not even dishing out the most assists, okay? Not even playing, you know, you could argue not even the best defensive season. So, I mean, he, he was a menace to start the year, but there was a regression, I think, mentally. But because Dylan Brooks was slowly improving eff- efficiency-wise. I kind of burped right there, sorry. But efficiency-wise, he had improved. And it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as how people had made it seem. But his play this past year makes it seem like, is he worth more than the mid-level exception? Are you paying him more than three years, 30 million? Are you paying him more than 10 million a year? Are you giving him the same year deal as PJ Tucker? I don't know. I don't know. That's where it becomes a bit convoluted because you don't know what he's worth. I think you look at what Royce O'Neal, PJ Tucker, you know, Jay Sean Tate are making, and maybe that's the similar vein of contract he should get. Three year, 33 million, three year, 30 million, maybe three year, 40. But even that, maybe that's starting to reach. And he's definitely a guy who's thinking that he should be probably making three years, 60, which is definitely not the case. So there is some irony that, you know, he might. I, I, I really want to know what's the also another team that could go for him. I wonder what's the team that would be interested in him. Watch, you know, it'd be, it'd be funny if the Warriors brought him in to have like Draymond teach him. 